Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news mashup video today, starting with Dillian White, who is taking the WBC to court in the United States to attempt to get some evidence to assist in pending arbitration against the WBC, and that arbitration set to take place in Switzerland. So see here on screen, so Law360 is reporting that White has initiated litigation in Florida aimed at tracking down evidence from the WBC for a pending arbitration in Switzerland after he was allegedly robbed of an opportunity to challenge the defending heavyweight world champion. So it says Dillian White on Friday filed his amended complaint asking the court for permission to subpoena the WBC, arguing he needs to track down certain evidence as he pursues arbitration after the WBC allegedly reneged on a deal providing that he could have the chance to, partic uh, to participate in a mandatory bout involving the then WBC world champion. Specifically, he is seeking company records and videotaped deposition testimony concerning the dealings of the WBC relating to him, his rankings, and the decisions made by the WBC that affected his ranking and the rankings of others since 2015. White argued that the information would otherwise likely be off limits to him since the institution administering the arbitration, the Court of Arbitration for Sport, does not permit the more broad style of discovery permitted in the US. So very interesting news. So the, some of this has obviously been quite quiet, I guess I would say, and I guess the um, pending arbitration will come as news to some. I mean, White has loudly been saying for some time that he was willing and able to take to the, the WBC to court if he if he didn't get his way. And obviously a lot of people for a, quite a while, for a couple of years, have thought it was just idle threats, White throwing his weight around, but he's sort of called the bluff and is uh, seeking... Um, some arbitration in Switzerland and this action in the United States, this uh, litigation to get some evidence is part of it. So White, as we know, became the WBC number one ranked contender. This is in November 2017. And uh, he was arguing, and this is sort of all laid out in this article, you can find this online, uh, that he should have had a shot within a year, etc. Never it happened. And it goes on to say that according to the suit, instead, the council wrongly skipped over him in favour of less worthy and lower ranked contenders to challenge the full world champion in a mandatory fight, the suit claims. So White became that number one contender, and then Dominic Brazil became the next mandatory after Berman Stavern. So Stavern had his fight with Wilder, the rematch, just prior to White being elevated to number one. And then Dominic Brazil was the next mandatory, and he was saying for some time, I'm your mandatory Wilder, and everyone was like, what are you talking about? You're not. I mean, why would it be you? But he was in an eliminator with Eric Molina. This was on that same card that Berman Stavern fought um, Deontay Wilder, Brazil was meant to be in a final eliminator with Stavern. But because um, Luis Ortiz at the time, he was out of that fight, Stavern was elevated to the main fight. Brazil went on to win the fight with Eric Molina, which was uh, downgraded to an eliminator. But Brazil argued, no, it was originally a final eliminator. So anyway, he was threatening legal action as well. He ended up becoming the mandatory. But Dillian White, obviously, even after the WBC put up the token WBC interim title for him to fight for, defend, etc., not happy, seeking to push for a title shot. So let's watch this with interest, because obviously... When a fighter takes on a sanctioning body, he's really going to war with them. So this is going to be really interesting to see how this turns out. Meanwhile, the WBA's so-called world champion, Trevor Bryan, and remembering there's a super champion and then the world champion, which used to be called the regular holder, Trevor Bryan says he's gearing up for his next fight, saying it's about that time again, folks. The Dream will be back in an arena soon defending his WBA championship belt. Stay tuned for the official date. So I'll play that clip now. Hey, y'all, what's going on? It's Trevor Bryan Jr., The Dream, a.k.a. your champ. But guess what? This is an announcement. The Dream will be in the arena event somewhere near you very soon. So the kid will be back in the ring. 
defending my title for the first time, the WBA Heavyweight Champ. Let's go, champ. Stay tuned. It's the dream. The British prospect Johnny Fisher is helping prepare Tyson Fury for his trilogy fight with Deontay Wilder on October the 9th. So Fury's uh, camp and this sort of rescheduled camp, remembering this was postponed from July to October due to Fury getting COVID. Well, that was what was reported at the time. So Fury, um, his training camp details have been quite quiet with most of it taking place in the United Kingdom. So Fisher here, a young prospect with power and some skill, but very raw, giving Fury some rounds so fisher here says rounds with the gypsy king what an honor and i guess for him being a young pro this will be a very good experience for him so i think tyson fury will also have got some good something out of it as well the ukrainian heavyweight alexander zarkozy who's currently 15 and 0 is set to take on collins omondi ojal and this will be on the 15th of october so that fight date was previously known but an opponent wasn't so this is announcing uh, collins omondi ojal as his opponent omondi ojal with a record of six one and oh but Zakozi six foot eight um, decent talent he should be able to have far too much at this point for Collins Omondi Ajal. Dave Allen has announced that he's actually having another fight ahead of what was going to be a return to the ring on the 23rd of October. So Allen will now be returning on the 1st of October in a show that's at the Tower Hotel in London. He says, my next fight, October 1st at Tower Bridge Hotel. Tickets, yada, yada, yada on the poster. So um, Allen is really starting to ramp up this comeback and the frequency of his fight. So potentially building towards something, you'd have to imagine. Uh, this will be presumably off tv but um, a good run out nonetheless for alan as he makes his return in the heavyweight division and rounding out this heavyweight news mashup video so ivan deitchko the kazakh heavyweight prospect and the former two-time olympic bronze medalist has been training in the reynoso gym down in san diego and you can see here pictured with andy ruiz jr this is the most recent of it he's actually been there for a couple of weeks now you can see here another one with reynoso from the start of the month and also pictured with canelo it kind of looks like father and son to some degree that um, but uh, I wonder if he's been sparring and that would be interesting because Frank Sanchez who's also in that camp has been sparring with Canelo before anyway I'll leave it there what do you make of it all drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on Twitter boxing underscore squared I'm out